Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at using On One Photo Raw 2018 as a Photoshop plugin. And as you can see, I have this image opened up in Photoshop. And let's say I want to send it over to On One Effects. To do that, you would go up to Photoshop's filter menu. And then you could see all the plugins are at the bottom. And there's On One. And since I'm a longtime user of On One product, I have On One Develop 2017 in there. And there's the current version, On One Develop 2018, On One Effects 10, On One Effects 2017, On One Effects 2018, which is the current version, and then two old ver versions of On One product, On One Enhanced 10 and Portrait 10. Now, if you're a new user to On One product and your um, On One Photo Raw 2018 is the first um, version of On One that you own, you'll be able to send anything from Photoshop into two on one modules. And those are of course on one develop 2018 and on one effects 2018. You won't be able to send it into the other modules, mainly because the other modules can be done in Photoshop, meaning resizing the image and layers, all that stuff could be done in Photoshop. So we have develop and effects 2018. I caution you though, do not send just this background layer over into any plugin, including on one photo raw 2018, because all your adjustments will be done on this layer. And when you come back into Photoshop, it's going to be baked in into it. And you'd really kind of have to undo it and go up to the history panel. Or if you accidentally close and save it, it's going to be baked into it. So you won't be able to come back in and do anything about it. So it's good kind of Photoshop practice to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command J if you have a Mac, Control J if you have a PC, then do any plugin adjustments on that duplicate layer. So then you would go up to Filter, down to On One, and in my case, On One Effects 2018. But I must caution you some more. If you don't have a real layer here, if you have, let's say, an adjustment layer, let's say we're going to add vibrance uh, to the image. So I added vibrance. So I have this vibrance adjustment layer. And you try going up to filter, you'll notice that these are all grayed out. You cannot put these plugins or these filters on an adjustment layer. So you'll need to do one of three things. You either need to flatten the entire thing out totally. And to do that, you'd have to go up to layer and then all the way down to flatten image. Or you would have to just flatten this adjustment layer with the layer below it or combine them. And to do that, you would hit Control or Command E on your keyboard and that will flatten just those two together and then you'll be able to uh, do your adjustments on that layer. Or finally, you could get a merge layer of uh, what I have here happened. I happen to have three layers. I could merge all those together, but not lose them. Just put that merge layer on top of the layer stack. And to do that, you have to do a kind of finger twister thing, uh, keyboard shortcut. And if you have a PC, the keyboard shortcut is shift, alt, control, E. And when you do that, it will combine those existing layers and put this final layer at the top. If you have a Mac, that keyboard shortcut is Shift Option Command E as in Edward. Then when you go up to Filter, you'll be able to go to any of your plugins, including on one. Now, in my case, I'm just going to delete those two. And I have my copied layer. And I'm going to send it over to on one effects. So I'm going to go up to Filter down to on one. Of course, I want to use the current product on one effects 2018. And what it will do it now will take this and it will open up in on one effects and you could put all the effects on like normal. But there are some little quirks that I need to warn you about. All right, we have the image opened up in on one and I'm just going to quickly do the most common adjustments I tend to do 
uh, to an image. And we'll go to dynamic contrast. I know I'm not really saying what I'm doing, but we have 30 odd videos on, on one product where I demonstrate everything. So I think you could watch some of that and you'll understand uh, these um, filters that I'm adding. So I so far added sunshine tone enhancer, dynamic contrast, and I'm going to add a vignette. And I'm going to add a strong vignette. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm done with the filters. I want to return to Photoshop. So I'm going to click Done. And it will render now this layer and return us to Photoshop. But there's a couple things I need to warn you about with using on one's plugin, Photoshop plugin. And this really applies to just about any plugin in Photoshop. So you could um, understand that. Now, okay, now here is our layer that I did on one on. So I could turn it off and there's our original layer. And I could rename this um, on one effects. Okay, now let's say for the sake of argument, I wanna send this back into on one effects. First of all, you really won't be able to readjust anything. So it's not saved as like a smart file where on one remembers your settings. But what it will do, it may confuse you. Let me explain. Let's go up to filter, go down to on one and go to on one effects 2018. When it opens back up in on one, as long as you didn't close down your Photoshop session, it's going to reapply the filters you just applied. You see they're here, but they're actually doubled. I don't know if you could notice that they're doubled, but they actually are. So I'm going to hit done. So we're not really able to re-edit the existing four filters I put on there. In effect, what we now have are those filters on our image applied twice. And I'll prove it to you in a second if you don't notice how overly processed now this image is. But you'll see once it comes back into Photoshop, there it is. Okay, now we have that here. Now there's the original and there's our processed image. If I go up to history, you can see down here that I sent it on one here, then I changed the name to on one effects and there I sent it to on one effects again. Let's go to the name change when I change the name and look at the image. You can see it is now a lot less processed. That's because we applied everything twice. So you cannot actually go back in and readjust any of your settings. But in a way you can if you do this. Let's delete this and let's duplicate that background again. I have a Mac. I'm hitting Command J again. PC Control J. We're going to make a smart object. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go down to convert to smart object. And it takes just a second. Now you can tell we have a smart object. We have this little uh, thing in the corner here that indicates this is now a smart object. Now I'll send that over into on one effects 2018. You'll see briefly a little thing pop up here. I think if I remember right, maybe not. Sometimes you'll get a little warning here telling you, yeah, there it is. It's just telling you, just ignore it. It's just basically that you open this up into another program. So when you pop back into the first program, um, you have to close it down to return to the other program. So again, it applied our filters and you could see that it applied them with our settings. Remember, I turned dynamic contrast down to 30 and I hit the tone enhancer and everything applied as is now you could just like delete these or whatever there's our um before and after before and after so let's click done all right now it's going to open back up again in photoshop once it renders the image or renders the layer and anytime now there is a method to my madness. Do, do, do. And there we go. 
Okay, now we're back opened in Photoshop. And there's the original image, and there's our processed image. And you can see now it's a smart layer, and we have even a layer mask, which is nice. I could come in, let's say I decide that I don't want the things I did in On One Effects 2018 to affect um, the statue or any of this marble here. And I could use the mask to mask it out. So that is a great feature. But another nice feature is I could go back in and re-edit this by double clicking on where it says On One Effects 2018. Double click there. And what it will do is it will eventually open back up into on one effects 2018 we still get that warning but it's not doubly applying the filters okay so we have our filters here i'm going to click done and to prove to you that it didn't doubly apply the filters is i'll do the same thing i did show you in the history panel that it didn't do it um, that it's going to be the same adjustment and eventually I'll be able to do that. So my whole point of all this is I recommend that when you send an image from Photoshop into a plugin, any plugin, including any on one plugins, that you convert the layer to a smart object first. It will take up more disk space, but it's more versatile and you'll be able to come back in and re-edit things. So we'll go up to the history panel and here is the last thing we did. The previous thing we did was right here when I did on one effects watch. I'm going to click on that and you're not going to see a change. Nothing changed. So there's the last. I sent it to on one effects the last time. The previous time I sent it to on one effects, nothing different. Remember when I didn't have a smart object, there was a distinct change. We like doubled up on our adjustments. So there's convert to smart object before I sent it to on one at all. Sent it to on one the first time, got that. Sent it to on one the second time, got the same thing. So I hope that made sense. And I hope I um, emphasized how it's my opinion that before you send an image over to any plugin, including on one photo raw 2018, that you do it as a smart layer. I think it just offers a little bit more versatility. And again, the only um, filters available as a plugin in Photoshop will be the develop module and the effects module. Um, unless you have legacy versions of On One, you'd have portrait and enhance as well. But um, again, most of you probably don't. So it's going to be the effects module or the develop module, and you'll be able to use it as a plugin. And when it's on its own layer like that, you could turn it off, turn it on. You could adjust the opacity. So if it's a little too heavy, you could bring that opacity of that layer down. So it's not as strong. Let's say bring it down to 35% and it's not as strong. So you have a lot of um, options when you do use on one as a Photoshop plugin. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.